as I alluded to off the top, at least based on my recollection of past National Signing Days, a little bit more drama, uh, a flip in the good direction, a flip in the negative direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no doubt about it. Um, you know, uh, obviously, <clears throat> there's a lot of moving parts and pieces with uh, uh, recruiting and National Signing Day now. And uh, obviously, it was great that they were able to add jo Joshua Mickens, a defensive end from Indianapolis. Not so good that they lost Kay and Lee who was a corner who was committed to them uh, out, out of, uh, I think, Georgia, I believe. And uh, so, uh, you know, kind of swung both ways on them. They, they'd flipped Mickens from LSU previously. Um, <clears throat> I just, uh, you know, the, we talked to Ryan Day for about 40, 45 minutes yesterday, and about 20 minutes of that was on name, image, and likeness, and not as much of it on the actual players who signed with Ohio State. So, and then you go on our message boards and they, you know, they're calling the coach a loser. They're calling uh, Gene Smith uh, out for uh, not embracing the new uh, world of NIL. And so we are in a brand new uh, paradigm here, you know, in terms of what college football is becoming with the buying of players, it seems. And uh, as one person who works at a Big Ten school told me, and I'm paraphrasing because he used a lot more details than, uh, the, than I could possibly put in a public forum, and I don't mean expletives, I mean details I can't repeat. He basically said Ohio State's money game is just fine to compete in the Big Ten, but for them to try and out-recruit the likes of Auburn, Georgia, Alabama, uh, and some of the others right now, they're just not quite up to snuff right now. So I don't know what Tony and Kevin have heard, but, you know, this seems to be until they get some kind of rules in place on what's legal and what's not legal and, and you know, what Ohio State's willing to do and what Ohio State's not willing to do. Um, you know, finishing with the number five recruiting class in the country used to be a pretty celebrated thing, and now it's looked down upon as – you know, you're the ruination of the program. So um, kind of a, a real, real messy day if you really get right down to it. It, it was interesting, Mark, yesterday, <clears throat> me and Kevin and, and Mark Givler and Tom Moore were part of a like a seven hour live stream of signing day. And one of the comments we got was from somebody who said, you know, I follow Ohio State. I follow Georgia. I follow Alabama. Everybody, when they lose a recruit, they say it's because of NIL <clears throat> and somebody else, you know, paid more. And uh, I think now it's true. So <laughs> it's valid to have these complaints. But you know, I was just watching an interview with Lincoln Keenholz, the quarterback out of uh, South Dakota, saying that he could have gotten more money at Washington, but Ohio State sold him on betting on himself. And I'm sure they talked to him about uh, C.J. Stroud's portfolio right now, making you know however many millions of dollars as a starter at Ohio State rather than taking the early money as a recruit. But Steve is right. If Ohio State's not going to get into the recruiting aspect of this as much as the rest of the country has or the rest of the, the people they're competing against for these five-star guys and even four-star guys like Mark Fletcher, the running back that shows Miami, if you're not going to you know, get into that, you're going to have to hope your guys, the recruits, like you're going to be relying on guys who buy into the long game. And buying into the long game is not something that many people do anymore including us like no who has patience for anything anymore i want i want it now the fact that this show takes an hour it should take five minutes and it should have been on an hour ago mark like it's in now 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 it's it's immediacy and so if you have players that will take a more patient approach i think that's good for the game it's good for your culture but it may not be good for the bottom line in terms of the ultimate balance of talent and so um you know it's going to take a a decision from Ohio State to get into this this bidding aspect of it, but also it's going to take the millionaires at Ohio State to start giving money to recruits, and I don't know if we've seen any interest in them doing that at this point. Well, if this is a five-minute show, then goodbye, folks. We'll see you next week here on uh, Ohio State Buckeyes Live 192. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, um, you're right. It, it, 
if you're going to be competing against the schools that are going to give you the money now and everything else, and it's, it's all well and good to say, okay, well, you know, you're betting on yourself and you're betting on, you know, we're going to get you better developed to make the NFL millions so you can get a million now or, you know, come here, bet on yourself, hope to pick up NIL deals while you're here and then be better positioned for the league where the real money is and then maybe even the second contract where the generational wealth really comes from. Um it's you know it's just it it's it, it's difficult and the and I think that the thing is and I mentioned this either on our seven hour show or a little wrap up show that we did. It's difficult for me to see, you know, going to Gene and Norma in Waldo, Ohio, and saying, please give us 10 bucks a month or whatever. Where, you know, where is Safe Light? Where is Wendy's? Where is, you know, where are all these, you know, Columbus is such a diversified economy in all these different sectors nationwide, et cetera. I mean, I, I, there has to be something better going on with the, uh, with, with the business giving, because I think that's going to be where you're going to, you have companies that are already set up to have a giving arm. They give money to nonprofits. They give money to this. They give money to that. I mean, and certainly by having Ohio State athletes associated with their product, generally that's, you know, that's going to be a good thing. But um, I don't know. I mean, I've got a lot of thoughts about it, but I've also talked about it for, for five hours yesterday. So this is going to go down as the first true NIL in SD because NIL was in play last year, but it was not, it was not the thing. It was still kind of new and still kind of being kicked around and people were trying to figure out what was going on. Texas A&M kind of stole the show last year with its approach. That class has now scattered into the wind uh, after that team did not come together properly. And, Everybody is lamenting how this player and that player and another player got away because Ohio State didn't have the bag. 